welcome to our show, The World Brief. Today, we dive into the rising wave of activism among Chinese Americans in Texas, ignited by a proposed bill that threatened to restrict property purchases. This political engagement has led to increased voter turnout and a united front against anti-China legislation, showcasing the power of community mobilization. Next up, we turn our attention to Europe, where the European Central Bank has once again cut interest rates in a bid to stimulate a sagging economy. With inflation under control but structural issues lingering, the ECB is shifting its focus from inflation control to economic growth, signaling potential further cuts in the future. It's a critical moment for European policymakers as they navigate these economic challenges. Finally, we discuss the US government's recent sanctions on two Chinese companies linked to drone production for Russia in the Ukraine conflict. This marks a significant step in the US effort to curb foreign military collaboration, reflecting ongoing geopolitical tensions. As the situation unfolds, the implications for international relations are profound. Please continue to watch for more detailed content. South China Morning Post reports on the rising activism among Chinese Americans in Texas, spurred by the proposed Texas Senate Bill 147 aimed at restricting property ownership for Chinese citizens. Lan Wang, a Dallas resident, initially dismissed the bill as a joke but soon became engaged in the legislative process, reflecting a broader mobilization among the Chinese American community. Activists like Lily True of Asian Texans for Justice note that this movement has led to unprecedented political participation, with many individuals who previously felt marginalized now actively advocating for their rights. The bill's eventual defeat has not deterred lawmakers from considering similar legislation, highlighting ongoing tensions and the need for continued vigilance among these communities as they prepare for the upcoming elections. Nikkei Asia highlights the European Central Bank's ECB third interest rate cut this year, marking a significant shift in its focus from controlling inflation to fostering economic growth amid a sluggish eurozone economy. ECB President Christine Lagarde emphasized that the disinflationary process is progressing well, with inflation now at its lowest in three years. However, economic growth remains a concern, as high interest rates have stifled investment and growth, prompting calls for policy easing. Despite these challenges, Lagarde maintains that a recession is not expected, but the ECB is preparing for further rate cuts in response to ongoing economic pressures and uncertainties, particularly in light of potential trade disruptions from the U.S. elections. The South China Morning Post also covers the U.S. sanctions imposed on two Chinese companies involved in the production of drones for Russia, marking a significant escalation in Washington's efforts to curb Chinese support for the Kremlin's military activities in Ukraine. The companies, Shaman Limbok Aircraft Engine and Red Lapis Vector Industry Shenzhen, are accused of collaborating with sanctioned Russian entities to develop long-range attack drones. This move underscores the increasingly strained relations between the U.S. and China, as Beijing attempts to navigate its diplomatic stance between Moscow and the West. As President Biden prepares for discussions with European leaders on supporting Ukraine, these sanctions reflect a broader strategy to counter perceived threats from the growing partnership between China and Russia. New York Times, Georgia Maloney, Italy's prime minister, has been navigating a complex political landscape since taking office, attempting to shed her hard-right image while still catering to her conservative base. Recently, she reinforced her traditional values by supporting a broadened ban on surrogacy and initiating a new plan to process asylum claims outside of Italy. Political analysts suggest that Maloney is walking a tightrope, balancing her international credibility with the demands of her right-wing supporters. By distancing herself from the European far-right and positioning herself as a bridge between mainstream and nationalist parties, she aims to maintain her political viability while adhering to the core tenets of her party. Foreign Policy As the U.S. presidential election approaches, several right-wing leaders in Latin America have openly expressed their support for Donald Trump, believing his return to power could usher in a significant shift in U.S. foreign policy. Figures like Argentine President Javier Milei and former Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro argue that Trump's leadership would enhance peace and reduce foreign interventions. However, historical evidence suggests that a second Trump presidency may actually lead to a more interventionist approach in Latin America, echoing the aggressive tactics of his first term. The revival of the Monroe Doctrine under Trump could intensify U.S. pressure on Latin American countries to align with American interests, potentially driving them closer to China instead. New York Times, the proposal to legalize assisted dying for terminally ill patients in England and Wales has ignited a passionate public debate, set to be formally discussed in Parliament. 
If passed, this legislation would mark a significant shift in the legal landscape surrounding assisted dying, a topic that has gained traction in various Western nations. Currently, assisting suicide is illegal in Britain, yet the legal system rarely prosecutes such cases, reflecting a complex societal attitude towards the practice. With many European countries and certain US states already permitting assisted dying under specific conditions, the outcome of this upcoming vote could have far-reaching implications for patients seeking autonomy over their end-of-life choices. Nikkei Asia reports that the US and Taiwan are set to enhance their military communication system, Link 16, to bolster their defense capabilities against increasing threats from China. This upgrade will facilitate real-time data sharing between various military platforms, including advanced F-16V fighter jets and M1 Abrams tanks. With the project expected to be completed by the end of 2026, U.S. defense officials have expressed concerns about China's preparations for potential aggression towards Taiwan by 2027. The upgraded system will enable faster communication and coordination during crises, reflecting Taiwan's urgent need to modernize its defense infrastructure in light of recent Chinese military maneuvers around the island. CNN highlights Vice President Kamala Harris's recent interview with Fox News, marking her first engagement with the conservative network amid her presidential campaign. The discussion, which was marked by interruptions and a focus on immigration, showcased Harris's attempts to navigate contentious topics while defending the Biden administration's policies. She faced tough questions regarding the immigration crisis and was pressed to address the concerns of families affected by crimes committed by undocumented immigrants. Despite the challenging dialogue, Harris aimed to pivot the conversation towards broader systemic issues and the need for legislative solutions, while also attempting to distance herself from previous stances she had taken during her earlier campaign. The New York Times examines the Biden administration's ongoing challenge of balancing military aid to allies, such as Ukraine and Israel, with the need to maintain sufficient U.S. military supplies. Recent decisions to send advanced missile defense systems, like THAAD, to Israel have raised concerns about the depletion of U.S. military resources. As the Pentagon continues to support allies amid escalating global tensions, particularly in the Pacific region, military leaders are increasingly wary of the potential impact on America's readiness for new conflicts. The article underscores a critical moment for U.S. defense strategy as it navigates the dual pressures of supporting international partners while safeguarding its own military capabilities. BBC The United States has taken significant action by sanctioning two Chinese companies believed to be involved in the production of aerial drones utilized by Russia in its ongoing conflict in Ukraine. The U.S. Treasury has also targeted a Russian intermediary and his company, effectively seizing their assets under U.S. jurisdiction. This decision coincides with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's urgent appeal for continued international pressure on Russia, highlighting intelligence suggesting that China is still aiding Russia in prolonging the war. Zelensky's victory plan emphasizes the need for military support from allies, including an invitation for Ukraine to join NATO, which he believes would strengthen Ukraine's position against Russian aggression. New York Times former President Donald Trump has reignited the conversation around tax cuts as he campaigns for the upcoming elections, proposing ideas such as eliminating taxes on tips. Initially, Republicans embraced his proposals, but as the election approaches, many lawmakers are expressing caution preferring to wait and see the broader economic picture before committing to Trump's tax plans. This hesitance indicates a shift in the Republican Party's approach to tax policy, especially compared to the unified effort they had in 2017 to implement sweeping tax reforms. As Trump pushes for new cuts, there is a growing concern among party members about the financial implications of his proposals, which may contradict previous tax legislation. Yahoo US in a remarkable operation, Nigerian authorities seized over 9 tons of illicit pangolin scales in a single day, highlighting the ongoing battle against wildlife trafficking. The raids, conducted in Kaduna and Ogun, were made possible through intelligence from the Wildlife Justice Commission, leading to the largest seizure of pangolin scales globally since early 2020. These scales, valued at approximately $1.7 million in East Asia, are highly sought after for their use in traditional medicine. Conservationists warn that pangolins, the most trafficked mammals worldwide, face severe threats from poaching and habitat loss, with Nigeria serving as a critical transit point for trafficked wildlife. (music) 
South China Morning Post reports on a revolutionary radar technology being developed by Chinese scientists that could potentially detect and track advanced stealth fighter jets like the F-22. This radar utilizes signals from China's Beidou navigation satellite system, making it cost-effective and versatile for deployment anywhere on the globe without revealing its location. The radar's innovative design allows it to switch to alternative satellite systems if Beidou is compromised, ensuring continuous operation. The project, led by engineer Wen Yuan Yuan, aims to enhance China's military capabilities against stealth aircraft, which have previously been difficult to detect. By employing a unique algorithm that simplifies the detection process, this technology could change the landscape of aerial warfare, especially for smaller nations that have previously struggled with anti-stealth capabilities. According to the New York Times, Fan Bingbing, once a leading figure in Chinese cinema, is making her return to the film industry with the release of A Green Knight. After a significant hiatus due to a tax scandal that led to her being fined nearly $70 million, Fan has re-emerged with a new role that reflects her personal journey and growth. The film, set in South Korea, explores themes of female empowerment and solidarity, resonating with Fan's own experiences during her time away from the spotlight. Although the film has not been officially released in mainland China, it has garnered attention through unofficial channels, highlighting the ongoing interest in her work despite the controversies of her past. The Diplomat analyzes the potential foreign policy implications of a future U.S. presidency under Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump concerning India. While Harris may adopt a more nuanced approach that could emphasize human rights and address ethnic tensions in India, Trump is likely to maintain a transactional relationship, focusing on defense and trade without addressing domestic issues. The article reflects on the historical context of U.S.-India relations, noting that past administrations have fluctuated in their support and criticism based on strategic interests. Regardless of the election outcome, the existing partnership between the U.S. and India is expected to remain stable, driven by mutual interests in countering China's influence in the region. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO brief via email. Silent fight, cradles burn.
Insatiable cry in this battle wasteland. 